brilliant. Oh yeah, very smooth ride by the way. Oh, you know, is this really one? Is this hydraulic transmission? This one? It is, yes. It's the uh, Cummings engine. Yeah, Cummings engine and Voith transmissions on it. I'll say it was a bit quiet for a TL11. Yes, it's not quite as grunty. What was the TL? Was it about two, 205 brake horsepower? Over 200. For the standard. The standard was about 230. Oh right, it really wasn't as high as that. So what's this then? About 200, is it? Or? I should know, 250 years. Oh, All right. Per vehicle, it's pretty good. The acceleration is fantastic, on it? Do you know it's, it's quite a lightweight vehicle as well. It's the same drivetrain that's in the class 142 paces. It's going to say. Which way more than these. It actually feels a lot smoother than a 142. With it's slow speed on track like this, it's not, not a bad ride. And at high speed on smooth track, they're not a bad ride either. Yeah. Going through punching crossings, even at sort of 10 or 15 miles an hour. They lurch and throw it around. Is this track maintained to light railway standards then? <laughs> um, well, it's maintained to our, to our own standards. I mean, in light railways such as this, we only run up to 25 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, but it's maintained to a good standard. I mean, there are patches of track that are in line for replacement, such as the one just back the bridge here. Yeah. But um, we have a slower speed restriction on that section for that reason. Uh, it's only about 25. Yeah, it look, I mean, it looks very good. And um, this is one of the lightest trains that we operate. We do have some, some quite heavy steam and diesel load coming to the front here and visit. Yeah. What's the route availability then, or does that not account on this uh, line? It's pretty low on, on the line. Yeah. Oh, that's sure. The axle load is somewhere around 22 for the schools, I think. Um, we've got the Princess Coronation, which is of Sutherland, that's based in Tunsi. Yeah. Um, that's got an axle load in the low 20s. Some of the mainline diesels that come in are also fairly similar. Oh, the, foot, what, the peak is one of the heaviest you've got here, isn't it? Possibly. The axle loading wise of 47 might be lighter though, because it's got fewer axles. Yeah. Okay. Wow, this is brilliant, this is. Not that many trees you get all front in there. I've only, I've only ever been in the cab of a Delta. This is probably <laughs> not as exciting as that people. Uh, it's just as good to me, I really do love these paces. You were still on your tiptoes earlier uh, to try and see over the bonnet of one of those things. Yeah, it was Gordon Highlander. Nice. On um, Great Central. Yeah. yeah, it's a surprise because it was his birthday. I paid for him to do a full play on his, one of his favourite trains. Locomotives. It certainly makes some nice noise. It was only on one power unit as well, the other one had. Um, I think it had cylinder line of failure. It's still about 1600 horsepower. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, 3,300 in total. Yeah. Deafening. Um, the guy who owns it, Martin Walker, he opened the, the bulkhead door to the engine room and it was such a din it was making, it was unreal. Right, bring up 25 now. It doesn't take long on this. Out of the seven power notches, we only used three of them. As a general rule, yeah. it's just so ridiculously uh, overpowered, it's, you know, it's not necessary to do anymore. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's in beautiful condition, this one. See, well, yeah, it's well looked after. It's sort of this 1980s era uh, interior, all intact on it. It's got the period posters and signs. It's in the West Yorkshire colours. Yeah. Which is the only livery you can actually carry, really, because oh, right. when it was new, it was in green and cream. Yeah. And um, green and white. But it was rebuilt since then, so uh, it looked quite different from the front. But certainly with this engine and drive configuration, it's still yeah. like that. Well, we live in West Yorkshire. I mean, she's actually from Halifax. Nice. So uh, it's quite nice seeing it in this livery. This is, I have a pacer channel on the YouTube, yeah, yeah. so you know this is going to make a nice change just from seeing 
144s and 142s going in and out of Huddersfield and Halifax. Why not? Oh yeah, this thing here, is that the single line token? It is, yeah. yeah. Um, our line splits in two sections, but uh, that one covers the whole lot. Yeah, because um, Louise was asking what it was for. Yeah. And she wanted to know if you hung it over the steering wheel or not. <laughs> well, you've got to hang it somewhere. <laughs> say one of the first gen DMUs that you got. Yeah, that was great, the ratio flows better. The class 127 DMU is out next weekend. Yeah. Um, even as a power twin on four engines, it can't keep up with it. Has that got Albion engines in it? No, that's got um, Rolls Royce eight cylinder engines. And oh, right. Torque converter drives in it. Oh, right. And it's still not as good as this. <laughs> Probably a smoother ride though. <laughs> it's not actually. Is it not? I don't know whether its suspension was stiffened up when it was converted into a parcels car in the 80s. Yeah. Um, but yeah, certainly these rail joints along here where we've got the heavy flat bottom rail, you can really feel it. The, the bogey sort of goes in and out of the oh. joints, whereas this one the wheel sets can move. Well, like for a pacer, this is very good. It is well, we're only, we're only plodding along. You might get a bit of sideways action going through these points and certainly this next one. You can feel it a little bit. Right? You won't have to put your fingers in your ear. It's that squeal, I think that's what makes these things so iconic in a way. Probably doesn't do the rails any good. No. I've noticed what it is very quiet, this one, isn't it? That's when I grew up, you know, eight, you know, late eighties, early nineties. So this is all, you know, it's all brilliant to me. This is. Ten minutes. Okay, your your name is Kevin. Kevin, oh, Andy. Yeah, so I managed to get down to Sorby Bridge Station in time. Got the forty coming through. Uh, West Coast Railways were running uh, twin 37s throughout the summer on the Scarborough Spa Express. But yeah, it's invaluable that real time train. Yeah, Only thing, it's not always accurate but with what unit it's going to be. So they'll have something timed as a pacer and then you'll get something like a 158 come down instead. But on the whole, it's pretty good. Yeah, sometimes the, like the, like the weight and maximum speed of working through I mean, Stuff we've had, like the uh, locos coming to pick up something to go to a diesel car. Yeah. They'll say it's 1600 tons. Well, you know. Yeah. Coasting, is it? Yeah, about one in ninety-five down here. Does it need any service brake application or? Yeah, it's great. It's that one now. Two stuff on the right, class 115 TFs. It's 
it's going to go in a 127 Very nice. Is that a 101 there, is it? Seats in it in the cinema. APT seats? Yep, 12 of them. Oh, very nice. What, from the. Um, it's an like interesting life as a training vehicle. It's nice, that is. Good selection of DMUs here. Was this station originally here? Yes, it was the only one on this bit of line. Yeah. It joined the middle of main lines, the area West Valley line. Yeah. So it's a very it's the first time I've ever you know been down here on this line. I'm very impressed with it. Very impressed. I've certainly got some stuff piled up at Swine Junction. All sorts of locos. Yeah. It's a nice place to have a walk around with your camera. I didn't realise Electra was here. Yeah. One of my favourite walks is actually up on the old Woodhead line. It's only a few miles away from where I live. Woodhead double, quite a bit double. Yeah. Take it, the track bit's been breached, is it? Yeah, we can't even go down there in our dreams, unfortunately. <laughs> it's a shame that is. <laughs> was it part of the beaching cuts? That, um... No, it was It was intact when we took over the site. Oh. Um, I think it was 1974. That road you see from the, the yeah. 38 trunk, that project, unfortunately. Killed it. Yeah, went straight across. Ah. We did manage to recover the same amount of track and materials. So what sort of heater do they have? Is it the same as what the bus would have? Um, you've got um, hot water heating from the obviously engine, engine cooler. Engine cooler, yeah. And then uh, there's just a secondary auxiliary heater, an Avis Packer heater, which um, cuts in until the temperature's up where it should be. That demists the screens as well, does it? I can uh, see the yeah, vents there. Yeah. Uh, and these have got heated screens as well. Oh, right. more than what a Deltic has, I think. <laughs> Pretty sure there was no heated screen on, on Gordon Highlander. I imagine they've got <laughs> enough electric heaters in the cab though to, uh, to make toast on. <laughs> yeah, it was rather cosy most, in there. Most, most diesel locos that sort of era. I mean, once you're moving, you can still get really drafty. But when you're sat still, you can roll your shirts with. Oh, is that someone on the cross? Yeah, there? It's, it's regularly used by a local fishing club. It's a really popular fishing spot. Lovely run that was. Fantastic. It's Kevin, wasn't it? Yep. Thank you very much, Kevin. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, nice to see you.